Today in part two of my Can ChatGPT Write Arduino Code series, we are going to explore if ChatGPT can give us working code and a circuit for using a button with an Arduino. In case you missed the first video in this series, you can find the playlist linked in the description of this video. But what I want to explore is, is ChatGPT a useful tool when you need help writing Arduino code, especially when compared to Google and things like the official Arduino documentation or many other tutorial websites that will come up that will give you not only example code, but a parts list and circuit diagram. So we've all heard plenty about how ChatGPT can write code at this point, but I am specifically interested in how it handles hardware, especially since as of right now, it cannot handle images as inputs or generate images as outputs. So if you are someone who just needs to know how to use a certain sensor or a certain piece of hardware with an Arduino. You don't just need the code, but you need to know how to wire it. So we are going to experiment with prompts ranging from very simple ones, just kind of like you would use for a Google search query to maybe a more engineered prompt to coax ChatGPT into giving us what we want and see how it handles giving us code for an Arduino button. Let's start out with the what you would consider a very short, simple search query phrase, similar to what you would probably Google. I'm just going to type Arduino button in here and see what it gives me. So Arduino is a popular open source electronics platform, blah, blah, blah. To use a button with Arduino, you will typically need the following components. So there we say, even though I didn't ask for it, it is giving me a parts list. And here is a step-by-step step -step guide to connecting a button with the Arduino and then it gave me some example code. So I'm not gonna do this all real time, but I am going to pause the video, go through the instructions it gave me to build the circuit, and then copy and paste this code over into Tinkercad and see how that works. But again, that might take me a couple minutes, so I'm not going to record the whole thing. After the jump, we'll see how it turns out. And drum roll please, the answer is not quite. It tried and it gave me some instructions that look like they make sense at first and this is where you need to be careful because again if you've been following this in the news generative ai is really good at spitting out convincing looking but false or wrong information so if compared to a google search if you just ask chat gpt for some arduino code and assume what it gives you is correct you could be in trouble. Remember that ChatGPT is a language model. And again, there are plenty of other YouTube videos that'll explain more about how it works. I'm not going to do that, but it does not have any internal model of what a breadboard is or what an Arduino is or how an Arduino works or anything. It is just trained on text from the internet and generating new text based on that training data. So there are plenty of forum posts and Arduino things out there, you know, the official Arduino website, all of that with this code, and it's trained on that, but that doesn't mean it's going to generate exactly the right code. So let's, or diagram, let's go through, and again, it did give me, sorry, let's go through and look at what it gave me with this prompt and how I tried to follow the directions. So it did give me a parts list, list without me asking, and then it gave me some step-by-step -step guides to connecting the button to the Arduino. So connect one leg of the button to a digital pin on the Arduino board, for example, to connect it to pin two. So it hasn't explicitly mentioned a breadboard at this point, but I assumed I'm going to be using a breadboard. So I went ahead and did that, connected one leg of the button to digital pin two, and then connected the other leg of the button to the ground pin on the Arduino board. And again, I assumed, maybe it assumes, it, and it doesn't really know what a breadboard is, but I know what a breadboard is and I'm gonna use one. So instead of going, directly to the ground pin, I go to the ground bus, which then goes to the ground pin on the Arduino. And then this is interesting. Now it mentions if you're using a breadboard, connect a jumper wire from the same row as the buttons pin connected to the Arduino to one side of the breadboard's power rail, usually labeled as a plus. So it's telling me the same row as the button pin that's connected to the Arduino, that is this row here. It wants me to use a jumper wire to connect that to the power rail. And if you have done this before or know how to connect a button to an Arduino, you should immediately spot that as a problem because I have just short circuited this input to five volts. So as this is wired right now, that input is always going to be high. If I push the button, it's going to short five volts to ground, which is bad and can damage your Arduino. So we already have an error in the wiring here, but let's keep going and see that it does tell us to connect a pull-up resistor. So use a 10 kilo ohm resistor from the same row as the buttons pin connected to the Arduino to the other side of the breadboard's power rail. So it's not really clear, clear what the other side of the breadboard's power rail 
means there. That could mean the other, physically the other side of the breadboard or opposite, meaning the ground rail instead of the positive rail. So I went ahead and connected it to plus five volts, even though it's a little vague what it means from that step. But then if you read ahead to the next step, connect another jumper wire from the row where the resistor is connected to the Arduino's five volt pin. So you can tell it, it kind of intended to make a pull up resistor there even though if you look at this diagram, again, this wire is gonna be the problem. If I removed this wire, then I would have an input with an external pull-up resistor, and when I push the button, it will connect that input to ground, so that would work, but this wire is going to prevent that from working. So just getting through the wiring diagram, we can see it didn't really give us that correct. Now let's take a look at the code, and I have entered that in Tinkercad over here, but so we can see the circuit at the same time, we're gonna look at the code in the chat GPT window. It defines a variable for the button pin, that's pretty standard, sets that pin as an input in the setup function, that's correct, initializes serial communication, uses the digital read command to read the button state. This is all stuff that you would find on the official Arduino website if you went ahead and looked at, again, there's pin mode, input for the bu button pin, digital read to get the button state. So, so far, seems right, but then here's the problem. The logic of this if statement compared to how it thinks it has the circuit wired. So it is checking if button state equals high, then it's going to print out button pressed. But look at how this circuit is wired. Even if we, so we know that this wire is a short circuit. So let's go ahead and delete that wire. Even if we look at how this is now wired correctly, we have a pull up resistor to five volts. So this voltage is going to default to high when the button is not pressed, and when I press the button, then that voltage is going to go low. But the code generated by ChatGPT thinks that the button is pressed when the voltage is high. So if I run this, it's starting to maximize this window because it's getting a little crowded here, and open up my code, you can see that it's just printing button pressed continuously even when the button is not pressed, again, because I have a pull-up resistor pulling the voltage on that pin high. If I hold the button down, then you can't really tell from the serial monitor there, but then it's going to stop printing. So right now you might either be thinking, okay, Google one, chat GPT zero, why would I bother putting that in chat GPT when I can just Google it and find the right results right away? Or you might be thinking, wait a minute, that's not fair. Chat GPT is not Google. You can't just give it a vague search query like this. You need to give it a better prompt that tells it exactly what you want. So let's go ahead and try giving it a more specific prompt for exactly what we wanted to do and see if it can generate the circuit diagram or instructions for the circuit and code to do that. So can you give me Arduino code, a parts list instructions to build a circuit? So an LED is turned on while a button is pressed and the LED is off when the button is not pressed. Let's see what it comes up with here, and then I will go through the same process of trying to build the circuit on over here in Tinkercad, entering the code and seeing if it does what we want it to do. So we start out with a parts list that looks reasonable, and then even though I did not explicitly ask it for a circuit diagram, it attempted to generate an ASCII circuit diagram, which it is pretty bad at. I actually have another video specifically covering circuit diagrams. Again, you can see it, it tried here, it has all of the component parts and this almost makes sense, but it has both the button and the LED connected to pin two. So again, chat GPT is not a circuit design program. It does not have a circuit model. This is just based on training data of what other, whatever ASCII circuit diagrams are out there on the internet. So I'm going to ignore that for now and see if I can follow the instructions here. So connect the positive or longer leg of the LED to uh, Tinkercad's really not happy about being a half size window here. Um, I'm gonna have to maximize Tinkercad for a second to rotate that. There we go. Positive or longer leg of the LED to digital pin three on the Arduino using a 220 ohm resistor. So I can do that because I know how to use a breadboard. 220 ohms, nope, not kilo ohms, ohms. I'm going to connect that to digital pin three and then connect the shorter or negative leg of the LED to ground on the Arduino. Again, it's not giving me explicit instructions to use the breadboard and ground bus, but I'm going to assume knowledge of a breadboard, so I'll do that myself. 
Connect one leg of the button to digital pin two on the Arduino. Again, Tinkercad is really not happy about being squished like that. One leg of the button to digital pin two on the Arduino. I'm gonna do that. The other leg of the button to the ground pin on the Arduino. Make sure your Arduino board is connected to your computer via USB. So interestingly, this time it included the USB instructions. I don't think it did that last time. And it did not include an external pull up or pull down resistor on the button. So we'll have to see if we scroll ahead. Did it set the internal pull up resistor? No, so you can set an internal pull up resistor on an input pin. Um, you can do that in software with the Arduino. You don't actually need an external pull up resistor. So maybe that got our hopes up there that it would realize that and include it, but it did not do that in the code. So we're gonna have trouble with a floating input on this input pin here, since when the button is not pressed, this input will be floating because there's no pull up or pull down resistor to give sort of a default voltage to this pin. But again, otherwise this code looks reasonable. We have variables for the button pin and the LED pin. We declare them as inputs and outputs. It gets those right. And then it reads the button state of the digital pin and checks Again, in this case, if button state equals high, which again, it got backwards. So if I had the internal pull-up resistor or the, um, sorry, either the internal pull-up resistor enabled or an external pull-up resistor connect here, this would be high by default. And then because of how the button is wired, when I press this, it's going to go low. So I had asked it to turn the LED on when the button is pressed, but it, if that pull-up resistor was set correctly, the behavior would be backwards here. I would actually want to check if this is low because that's what happens when the button is pressed. That's when I would turn the LED on. And then when the button is not pressed, I would want the LED off. So I think I will still call this another win for Google. If we switch our windows around a bit here, I think you will see that the code generated by chat GPT is line for line identical functionally to the code on this official Arduino documentation page, which again, isn't surprising because this code is all over the internet. So there's probably lots of instances of this in the training data where chat GPT falls flat. Again, is it does not have any model of how a breadboard or a circuit works or anything. It's just based on training text. So it, in this case, even though it got the code right, it forgot the pull up or pull down resistor, which in this case with the code here, you see we have a pull down resistor. So this input pin is going to be low by default. And then when you press the button, it connects it to five volts and it will be high. So the logic of the if statement with the button is actually pressed when this variable goes high and then you turn the LED on makes sense in that case with this pull down resistor, but that is not what ChatGPT told us to do, even though that's sort of what it thought the code was doing. Moral of the story, don't trust ChatGPT to do your Arduino projects for you, at least not yet. Although I do plan to keep making more videos in this series on other common Arduino things that you might search for or look for help for on the internet. If you have a question or I got something wrong, since I am certainly not an expert on generative AI, or you have an idea for another video, please go ahead and leave a comment below this one. Thank you.